morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Professor Sistrunk, and I am reaching out to my students. Okay, anyway, so cybersecurity, what is it? What do it mean? We have actually started this and we are digging deep off into it, but now it is time to run a succession of labs that you will need to complete this entire course of cybersecurity. My objective here is to actually run you through each and every one of these labs back to back so you can get your cybersecurity skills up. This is a good video for you to begin to start learning cybersecurity from the basics. We are using the Cisco platform because the Cisco platform, to me, my personal opinion, I have that right to have one, uh, is a better platform because it introduces you to multiple things. So right now, you have learned how to use Packet Tracer, you have learned how to use NetLabs, and you actually learned how to build out the cyber, uh, cyber security workstation onto your computer. Now, this is important. Right now, if you look up here, you see that you have Cybersecurity Workstation and you have Cybersecurity Onion. Don't worry about the other two. They will come soon, okay? But right now, we're gonna get you started with those two. So you have that. You built it out. If you did what I asked you to do, you went through the steps and built your own Cybersecurity Machine. It is important that you utilize this environment remember we put it in virtual box so we won't actually disrupt or cause harm or get ourselves in trouble let me put that again put, put that together again we do not want to get in trouble by snooping in other people's worlds okay so we created this sandbox in the virtual box it's a sandbox sandbox means a place where you can go and play without disrupting the rest of the world. Um, so we built it out and it looks beautiful. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this again. You also have Packet Tracer. Now my Packet Tracer gonna come up and ask for my credentials. I'm not gonna put them in right now. But you also have Packet Tracer. And if you followed what I asked you to do, you went to Cisco website, you downloaded Packet Tracer and you went through the class. Remember, if you're working with me, I'm gonna have you do that anyway. So it's important for you to go ahead and do that. I'm gonna slide this to the side real quick. But this is the Packet Tracer environment. So hopefully you went and built this out, okay? Hopefully you did that. Who knows, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Okay, so Packet Tracer is gone. So don't worry though, don't worry, don't worry. We gonna actually walk through each one of those steps to get your packet tracer skills together. Remember, it's a simulation environment what that will allow you to build networks. Now, with this session, in every session, let me tell you how this will go. I am gonna start a simple lecture, five or 10 minutes, maybe even less than that. And from there, I'm gonna go into a lab and demonstrate the lab. I want you to do the labs like I do it. In this session here, you're gonna have a lab to do. It's gonna be a simple lab, just giving you ideas of how we do things in the classroom and how we get things going. It's gonna be close to a real world event, but remember, it's not the classroom, so you don't know all the uh, things that will actually go on. But so I want you to get prepared to watch all of these videos from the start to the end so you can get your skill set up to par, okay? All you have to do is follow this. You don't have to worry about anything else. If you do the things that I ask you to do, you are ready to start rolling out these labs. So our first lab will be, let me see if this is it right here. Our first lab will be this lab here. You do this lab, it's a simple lab. We're gonna walk through it and get your skill set up to par. It's really simple, really easy, no par. Remember, it is the very first one, one, zero, one, two, class activity. 
Okay, we're gonna walk through this lab and get you apart. So what's important for you? What do you have to do? You have to have all the tools that I told you to download on your system and build out on your system. You got that coming, bam. The next thing you have to do is listen to these beginner lectures and fold off into or fall off into the lab. Complete the lab. The, la the very last thing you have to do is save that lab. That lab will be your log. Keep the lab so you can always go back to refer to it. Many of these labs, you're gonna have to go back, you're gonna have to go back, you're gonna have to go back, you refer to them for, you know, just to make sure you understand the concepts, the definitions, and how to proceed and do the work. So with that being said, this is gonna be short. Like I said, this is Professor Sistrom. Let's get ready to do lab after lab after lab. You know my model. Lab up. Okay, we are back. So, as I explained earlier, I want to go into this lab, and this is a basic lab, just to show you what you need to be focused on as you travel through the labs. I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. I am just gonna run a succession of labs back to back on this YouTube page about security so you can begin to get up to the security level you should be at. Now, in this particular lab, you just have to sit back and watch a video. And after the video, you will come to the lab and start answering questions. So this should be fairly simple. For those of you who are sitting at home right now, all you have to do is walk through this lab the way I walk through it and just simply do the assignments. Now, I'm gonna alter the questions because I'm going in the explaining what things are situation instead of just telling you the answers to the lab. So when, I, when we come to labs like this, that's out of the Cisco Academy, I am just gonna basically explain what is meant by certain things so you can get up to par. But watch how I do it and tell me what you think. So the first thing you notice in this particular lab is, it's a class activity. This is one of the labs when you bring the whole class together and you say, hey guys, I want you to sit there for the next 30 to 45 minutes and figure out how this is completed. Now, ideally as a professor, you wanna have the class look at the video before they get to class. Hopefully students will do that, but you always got those students who don't understand the concept and being prepared before you come to class. But with that being said, when they get in class, you can, as a professor, just run the video in class and have the students watch it and then proceed to answer your, your questions on here. This is what we would call a class activity, simple as that. Always remember the objective is important, so make sure you read the objective. Just simply say understanding or understand vulnerabilities of wireless and other common technologies. Now you know that wireless is huge in America where we at. Everywhere you go, you can get on somebody's wireless connection. But have you ever asked yourself this question? How safe is the wireless connections that you connect to? Because you don't know what you actually are connecting to. So it would be wise to pay attention to this lab and watch this video all the way to the end. Now, the background of this scenario is simply nearly every secure system that you use today can be vulnerable to some type of cyber attack. And, that, and that's true. People don't get to the point in your life where you think that these devices that you connect into are safe. They are safe as long as you are doing safe things with having your proper security set up on these devices. And I'm gonna show you what I mean as I proceed through this particular lab. The next thing is what is required to complete this lab? Simply a PC or a mobile device which is connected to internet access which is real funny seeing that we trying to protect ourselves from being connected to wireless network access, okay? So you're gonna watch this TED Talk video, but we're not gonna watch it. You're gonna sit back and watch it. And if you need the link, 
I will put the link in the bottom of the description of this particular course so you can make sure you can go watch it. Listen, whether you in the classroom with me or you sitting at home, wherever you at, watch the video, answer the questions, and keep a log. Every true technician keeps a log of the work they're doing so they can always go back to that log. This is my log right here. After I complete this, I'll store it and keep it so I can always refer back to it. That's what a log is. Keep it, people. So, in this, after you watch the video, you see here that this um, hacker was out there and he was demonstrating to the audience how you can easily be hacked. And you're just going to choose one of the many hacking techniques that he demonstrates so you can begin to learn how to protect yourself or protect the organization from being hacked. After you do that, you just simply ask a few questions. Now, the first question here is, what is the vulnerability being exploited? So I'm not going to answer the question. I want you to answer that question. But I will give you information and a source to go to. So a vulnerability is a weakness which can be exploited by a cyber attack to gain unauthorized access to or perform unauthorized actions on a computer system. Vulnerabilities can allow attackers to run code, access system memory, install malware, and steal, destroy, or modify sensitive data. And I give you a source right there, but that's what a vulnerability is. So you just need to know that. You need to know that definition of it. You need to know what it is. And the most important thing is why people are attempting to do these particular things. It's unauthorized. You cannot go into anyone's system that is not yours and begin to work on their system. Uh, you shouldn't be destroying, stealing, or modifying system uh, sensitive data, but we know that we got people, places, and things that does that, okay? And I shouldn't say people, places, thing. I should just say people. <laughs> yes, indeed. Corruption. The next one said, what information or data can be gained by a hacker exploiting this vulnerability? Simply. Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what the answer to that question is because you're going to go through your own research. Um, but a vulnerability is a weakness which can be exploited by a threat actor such as an attacker to uh, cross privilege across privileged boundaries, form unauthorized actions within a computer system. This is from Wikipedia, the source that you can go read. And the reason I'm giving you these particular sources is so you can begin to go build your own source think tank, your own sources where you can go to get information. That's one of the things I notice about students. They have no idea how to build their own uh, resources to always be able to consult to get information. You need to know how to do that. So Wikipedia can be one, this other website, UpGuard can be one, etc., etc., etc. I'm just throwing sources out there for you to use. You may find your own source and don't even need these, but at least you got to start. The last thing I went a little deep on because I wanted to, well, not the last, this is almost the last thing. How is the hack performed? So definition of hacking is an attempt to exploit a computer system or a privileged private network inside a computer. Simply put, it is unauthorized access to control of control to take control over computer networking systems. Okay, so it is forbidden by law, um, rules or custom. And I thought I put that definition in there so you can know what it means. Sometimes you're gonna see me put words in there so you can actually know, hey, it's nowhere around it. Forbidden by law rule and custom you cannot do it it's, an, it's illegal it's wrong and you shouldn't be doing it and that's why so many people end up going to jail when they do this stuff so they think oh it's mom and pop shop 
I can go and hack their system. No, you can't. I can hack my neighbor's system. No, you can't. No, no, no. But go ahead and do it and go to jail. <laughs> I gave you a resource. Now, how to prevent this? It says, what about it says, what about this particular hack interests you? I just simply said learning that any device can be hacked, and that's true. It doesn't matter what the device it is. But how would I prevent this? And I went a little deep on that. Uh, so it says here, how do you think this particular hack could be mitigated, uh, make less severe, serious, or painful? So I went a little deep on this because I want you to start getting, wrapping your mind around the concept of defense in depth. Defense in depth simply means to use multiple tools. Remember, I talked about the tool belt scenario, and I'm gonna keep talking about it, so don't worry. If you didn't catch it before, you'll catch it coming in the future. But you have multiple tools where you can utilize to protect yourself. Is it defense in depth is a concept used in information security in which multiple layers of security control defense are placed throughout an information technology IT system. So the intent of defense in depth is to use multiple things. The main purpose is to uh, protect the personal, uh, the technical, secure, and uh, physical. So you want to make sure that you use these various tools like physical controls, technical controls, and administrative controls to protect your organization. And if you start adapting this in your own life, you will notice that it's easy to go into an organization and have this security concept. So controls, definition, I mean, defense in depth can be divided into three areas physical, technical, administrative. The physical controls is anything that would allow a person to get and really get their presence to touch, feel, and get near your particular devices. You should have a gate, you should have fences, you should have cameras, you should have whatever that will stop a person physically getting there. Technical controls is simply technical controls are hardware and software whose purpose is to protect systems and uh, resources. Examples of technical controls would be, you wanna encrypt your disk. You wanna have fingerprint readers so people when they come in, they, they have the right privileges to get in. You wanna have authentication on people walking in in your places. Hardware technical controls different from physical controls in that they prevent access to content of systems. So you want to make sure that they can't get on the con get the content that's in the physical system. So that's the real difference. So if someone asks you, what's the difference between physical controls and technical controls? Preventing someone to get access to the content that sit on those systems. Administrative controls is really simple. You want to create policies and procedures to stop people from getting to your, getting the information that's on your system. Their purpose is to ensure that there is proper guidance available in regards to security and regulations are met. They include things such as hiring procedures, data handling procedures, and security requirements. So from start to end, you want to have all this together to make sure that individuals cannot get to what's mostly important in your organization, your data. So read through this and then look at the video and go do it and keep this as a law. You're building logs now. We, earlier on I talked about the different type of systems that you don't already have that you can utilize to build a dynamic network and work in it at home. Now you're getting lab after lab after lab so you can work with it. This is Professor Sistrunk. I'm gonna end this lab here. And remember, we're moving forward, people.